So hi everyone, I'm Kaylee Books. Uh, I'm a junior on the Rice soccer team and welcome to Empower Every Day, a series where we talk to alumni that continuously empower women wherever they are. So this is Funmi Jimo. She attended Jones College and got her undergraduate degree in English and Women and Gender Studies at, at Rice. Funmi competed in both long jump and sprinting events, such as the 100 meter hurdles, as well as the pentathlon and the heptathlon. Um, she's currently a member of the Rice Athletics Hall of Fame and still holds the record for the heptathlon and the 100 meter hurdles. Um, after her time at Rice, she went on to compete at the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics wow, um, as well as three other US World Championship teams. Um, she later came back to join Rice as uh, part-time coaching the men's athletics, uh, sprints, hurdles, and relays as an assistant coach, and then returned full-time to coach the women's sprints, hurdles, and relays, and was awarded assistant coach of the year for the men's squad in 2015 and the women's squad in 2017. And she's currently moved on to start her own medical legal business with a group of other women and coaches, and then coaches uh, as well in the evenings at a private evening, sorry, at a private school. Um, so I would just like to start off by um, asking you how your experience went as a female student athlete at Rice. Um, you know, I had, I had a great time as an athlete, <laughs> you know, I, I loved it. I had a, a good group of girls around me. Um, at, the, at the time, the head coach was um, Victor Lopez, who was a huge proponent of women's sports and just an excellent uh, coach of honestly anybody, but really did a lot to help empower us and make us feel, you know, amazing at what we're doing and be happy to be strong and powerful and just like revel in being better and better and stronger and stronger. Um, so my my experience as a woman athlete at Rice, I think was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, awesome. It sounds like you had, I mean, with as well as like the accomplishments that you got while you were there, like it just sounds like it was really amazing. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a lot that goes into like being a female student athlete specifically. Did you feel like you had to handle mental health and like body image issues? And how did you deal with that? You know, um, in, in undergrad, dealing with that, yeah, yeah, it's something that you, you think about and, and you do deal with some of your body image, you know, issues. I, I don't think that it was overwhelming for me. I know that's not the case for all people. Um, I think that times have changed and maybe now there's a, there are more resources available to young students who, who are feeling those kinds of self-esteem issues with their body um, and just how to deal with it mentally. There are resources there. I know that one of my first forays into just having an open communication about mental health, knowing that I can have somewhere to go and that there is no stigma attached to it was from my head coach. Victor told me, he was like, I think that, you know, I was dealing with some other people. Like, I think that you should go and talk to somebody. He's like, that's okay. Sometimes I need to talk to somebody. And he did not make me feel bad about that maybe being a necessity or something to deal with. And since then, I've had coaches who have, you know, let me know that, hey, we're only human. Everybody needs help in all kinds of ways. And at different times, you may need more help than other times. And it is okay to go and seek that help. So that was my first foray into that. It wasn't widely spoken, I think, from what I could tell through all athletics, but it was definitely something that my personal coach said, hey, you might need this kind of help and go ahead and get it. You know, it helps. Well, it's really all you can ask for. Like, it, it can just be so intimidating. Yeah, it can. Being in that place and not knowing, like, where to go and what to do. So great to hear that. Um, so then as you got out of college and you've moved on and you've now started to like join the workplace. Um, what have you found your experience to be as a woman, like in society, in the workplace and how has that impacted you? Um, so in the workplace, I think that I, I got so much like personal empowerment from being a good athlete and being okay with being strong, being okay with being, uh, 
I don't know, maybe even vocal because, you know, there's some leadership that comes in being a good athlete. And as you progress and maybe even being a leader on your team, you learn your own voice, you learn how to use it. And I think that for me, it, it was helpful for me getting my needs and wants and point across in the workplace, but is sometimes considered intimidating for sure um, to be super vocal, to yeah. also be able to express well exactly what you mean. Because I know that sometimes people have a lot of waffling when they when they speak, and and that can come off as uncertainty. But when you speak very deliberately and you know what you're talking about, that can come off as a little intimidating, you know. So, you know, I I I've not run into a lot of pushback professionally. I have had certainly commentary like, "Oh, Fumi's tough," or this, that, and other. And it's not even that I'm tough; it's that I'm a matter of fact in knowing what I want in having an opinion, being able to say, hey, I think this, or, you know, not apologize and then follow with my opinion, but hey, this is what I believe. I said, oh, I'm sorry, do you think that maybe? No, (laughs) I have confidence in what I have to say. And I think that's something that a lot of women fall into is apologizing before presenting their opinion. And that's just not something I do, but I will say that I have been blessed and super lucky, lucky to be in professional settings where, you know, my my, uh, my confidence was fostered and, and welcomed and I never felt like a lot of pushback from um, wanting to be a leader or being a leader or, you know, having an opinion. Awesome. I mean, you're clearly just like bring so much empowerment to yourself, to women around you, to like um, the people that look up to you as a role model and you've had the opportunity to coach and teach and like you're just telling us now like just be proud of who you are so are there certain like strategies or um, tactics that you found help you to like empower yourself or empower those around you and like what keeps you in that headspace so I think that number one anybody male female otherwise you're gonna feel confident when you are um, knowledgeable about what you're talking about you know, and that's what you're doing at university is becoming knowledgeable in what you're doing. And even if you go to a workplace that doesn't um, correlate directly with what you were doing in undergrad, you educate yourself and you make sure that you're knowledgeable about whatever's happening. That way, when you're speaking, you're speaking from a place of of know-how, of of knowledge, and also knowing, and I actually learned this at Rice, it's okay to be wrong but also acknowledge that you're wrong and have confidence to say, this is, if you're not sure, if you've done your, your work, your background work, and you're not sure about what you think you know, you can't qualify that statement with, I think this or whatever. And then if someone's like, that's not right, you can accept that, you know, because nobody is infallible. Like people make mistakes. And I remember being at Rice and being super intimidated at first and being like, everybody's a genius and of course, I'm just yeah. gonna fall apart, you know? <laughs> And people are incredibly smart and there were geniuses, I'm sure, you know, but I also learned later on that um, some of these people have the same questions that I have, but they want to present as being all knowing and don't ask those questions and asking a question does not make you stupid. It makes you someone who wants to know. And so I started getting over oh, she asked that question kind of thing. Like, I'm going to ask the question because I'm not going to walk around like a dum-dum. Yeah. You know, I want to know. I want to be in the know. And that can be intimidating too because some people are like, man, I was scared to ask that question. But it took me a long time to get there. It really did because I was like, man, should I know these things? Whether it was in undergrad, whether it was in work, like, should I know these things? Mm-hmm. And then I would do my best to kind of educate myself, but then later come to realize, you know what? Sometimes I'll pull someone to a side who I think knows more and ask them what I was scared to ask in front of other people and find out that they don't know either. <laughs> and I'm like, well, wouldn't it be better if we all asked the same questions so we could find out? And so that's something that gave me confidence because I realized a lot of people pretend to know and they actually don't. And I really want to know. So. <laughs> That's kind of how I run on a daily basis. I'm going to find out. I want to know. No, there's, that definitely comes to be really true at Rice. You see so much like hesitance because just assuming everyone must know everything, but great point to just go for it. Just go for it, man. Who cares? Honestly, I started to learn 
who cares? Now I know, <laughs> you know, exactly. like now I'm in the know. <laughs> well, thank you so much for like bringing all of this incredible insight. It's, it's honestly such an honor to get to hear from you. Um, and yeah, thank you for wanting to speak to me. Yeah, no, of course. And thank you for everybody who tuned in. Um, and we will see you guys next time.